love and welcome to the love niche podcast it's a billion podcasts to listen to and the universe guided you right here to this one it's eight billion people in the world yet you met me and that is not by happen chance this is a divine meeting and may we guide each other well i am in this world but i'm not of it on this podcast you'll hear topics about both worlds spiritual and earthly my goal is to keep learning evolving and spreading love Okay, this one is going to be long, y'all, but I'm almost done. So, the siren bird-like description from classical sources were retained in in the Latin versions. But sometime during the interim, the mermaid shape was introduced to the body of work. So, they switched the appearance. A woman fish or mermaid. The siren was illustrated as a woman fish mermaid in the 9th century. Even though this contradicted the accompanying text, which described it as a vivane, an English made Latin bestiary dated 1220 1250 also depicted a group of sirens as mermaids with fish tails swimming in the sea, even though the text stated they resembled winged fowl down to the feet. Illustration, illustrating the siren as a pure mermaid became commonplace in the second family bestiaries, and she was shown holding a musical musical instrument in the classical traditions, but also sometimes holding apparently an eel fish. An example of the siren mermaid holding such a fish is found in one of the earlier codices in the group dated in the 12th century. So they're going to break down bird, hybrid, and etc. So bird-like. A counter example is also given where the illustration where the illustrated sirens group of three are bird-like conforming to the text as a hybrid the siren was sometimes drawn as a hybrid with a human torso fish-like lower body and bird-like wing and feet wings on the shoulder hanging at the waist combo as a also, a siren may be holding a oh, comb and mirror. Also, a siren may be holding a comb and a mirror. Thus, the comb and mirror, mirror which are now embellic of mermaid across Europe, because the mermaid did pick up a mirror, derived from the bestiaries that describe the siren as vain creatures requiring those. Oh, come on. Um, later, bestiary texts appeared which were modified to accommodate the artistic conventions. It is an example that the sirens other part may be like fish or like bird they also appear to be medieval works about sirens the pilgrim dreams of a female that is described as stuttering cross-eyed crooked at her feet with stunted hands and pale in color. It is not until the pilgrim gazes upon her that she is turned desirable and is revealed by herself to be a siren. The siren then claims that she turned Ulysses from his course. Um, Whoever becomes used to me rarely leaves me so so fully do I satisfy him. The siren claims that she turned Ulysses from his course is inherently false because the siren and Odyssey do not manage to turn Ulysses from his path. Ulysses and his men were warned by Syracuse to prepare for the encounter by stuffing their ears full of wax. Um, he wants to hear the siren's song. Let me pause for a moment. What just came to me was they was on the water a lot, y'all. They was always going on voyages, always on the water. They knew about these other worlds. And to me, when they go to these other worlds, they're encountering all this mythical stuff that we hear about. Because if you've, at this point, if you've been all over the world we have planes and stuff what are y'all still on the water for discovering lands talking about they going underwater i bet you are going underwater and underneath them damn ice walls too wow 
Wow, this is amazing. All of this for a mermaid. Um, Renaissance. Female court musicians known as courtesans filled the role of unmarried companion and musical performance by unmarried women could be seen as immoral. A creature could control a man's reason. Female singers became associated with the mythological figure of a siren who usually took half human half animal form somewhere on the cusp between nature and culture leonardo da vinci wrote of them in his notebook stating the siren sings so sweetly that she lulls the mariners to sleep and then climbs upon the ships and kills the sleeping mariners so again mariners i need to talk to some navy, navy people they know And I told y'all in the last one, and the man works on the water and he heard it singing. He actually put it on his TikTok and they took that man TikTok down. Why? If it's bull crap, why? So now they're like demonizing the women. This is 1801 to 1900s. Some suppose the sirens were a number of lavacious women who prostituted themselves to strangers and made them forget their pursuits while drowned in unlawful pleasure. And again, it talks about that in the Bible, too. The distinguished Celtic makes the siren to have, have been excellent singers. Yeah. I think they were protecting themselves. And if singing to a man to kill him then that's what she had to do before he look upon them and think they're beautiful and take them to be his wife like what the fuck young women in beautiful form i think they were just shapeshifters why, why these men went home they always on the water and taking what don't belong to you and you and they got some so it gives me other things to look up, which are interesting. One that stood out was, was, um, nymph, Slavic fairies. I just love fairies. Water spirit. I think that was it. Further reading. That was so interesting. Okay, so now I'm going to wrap it up with the gods. So remember we looked at Inky and, and EA. I wanted to, to talk about them. Inky. Inky. I got to pull it up. It brought up EA. <laughs> Hell no. Not that EA. EA God. It brought up electronic. <laughs> he ate the game. Hell no, nah, that shit was funny. Oh, I guess it go back to Inky. Okay, so it's Inky. I guess it's all the same. So, Inky Sumerian is a Sumerian god of water, knowledge, crafts creation one of the An Anu Ananuki Anuka. He was later known as E. A. Akaiden in Akaiden, Assyria, Babylon region, it is identified by some scholars as I A in the Canaanite religion. The name was rendered Eos in Greek. So again, all these names have meanings in different cultures. God of creation, intelligent, craft, water, seawater, lake water, fertility, semen, magic, mischiefs. 
So, of course, if he were to have daughters, they would be daughters of the water. This is awesome, y'all. Goat fish, goat fish. Parents, A.N. and Namu. Consort, Nershag, Daminka, children, Marduk, Dumin, Nishar, Nati, Uti, Niti. Those were the freaking Sumerian. So a long time ago, I read the Sumerian story, y'all. Uh, Greek equivalent, Poseidon of Prometheus. He was originally the Pantheon god of the city of Erdu, but later the influence of his cult spread throughout Mesopotamia and the Canaanite, Hittite, and Harans. He was associated with the southern band of constellations called Ea, but also with the constellations Aishku, the field. Beginning around the second millennium BCE, he was sometimes referred to in writing by the, num the numeric idiom for 40, occasionally referred to as a sacred number. The planet Mercury, associated with Babylonian, in summer and times, identified with Inki. Many myths about Inki have been collected from various sites, stretching from southern Iraq to Levantine coast. He is mentioned in the earlier extant cuneiform encryption throughout religious and was prominent for the third millennium through the Hellenistic period. The exact meaning of Inki name is uncertain. The common translation is Lord of Earth. The Sumerian En is translated as a title equivalent to Lord and was originally a title given to a high priest. Kai means earth, but wow, the lord of earth. Inki. Shut the fuck up. Y'all, the lord of earth. So if you go to Genesis, it says the lord God, the God, God. Go to Genesis in the beginning and it's diff highlight the different ways they say God. The lord God, God. It's just too many different ways. Okay. Now it makes sense. The Lord God. Wow. E is translated as Lord. Key as Earth. The Lord of Earth. <laughs> there are theories that K that Kai is the name, has another origin, possibly king of unknown meaning occur, meaning mound. The name EA is allegedly hurrying in origin and others claims that EA is possibly whatever. Had to go mixing shit up. Life, spring, water, the house of water. It also suggests that the original non-divinity of Indru was not Inki, but Abzu. The emergence of Inki as the divine lover of Nershag and the divine battle between the younger Igidi divinities, Azu and Azu. The underground waters of aqua fire became the place in which foundations of the temple was built. It's giving with some Sumerian deity name as in Lil. There are variations like in Lil, in means Lord, E means temple. It is likely that Ea is Sumerian short for Lord of the Water. I think so. And Inki is God of the Water. And Ab and Abzu also means water. I think it is Lord of Earth, and we all know Earth is, is like what eighty percent water. This is amazing, y'all. This is amazing. The the Inki Temple had an entrance, a pool of fresh water. So when I pray, when I, um, my Abba, my spiritual teacher, Dr. Delbert Blair, when he prays, he said he prays to the universal father. And I pray that way too, because here we just learned that there's, uh, the Lord of earth, but something created it and something created the parents that made it and all up and all up and all up. That's like. Your grandchildren praying, your kids praying to you, but you have grandparents, you have parents and grandparents like that. This is interesting. Inki was the keeper of the divine power called the Me, the gift of civilization. He is also shown with the horn crown of divinity. 
Ink is depicted with two streams of water flowing into each of the shoulders on the Tigris and the Euphrates. Along him are two trees, symbolizing the male and female aspects of nature. He is shown wearing a flop skirt. Okay, so he probably created her. That makes sense. And yep, the master and shaper of the world, god of wisdom and of all magic. Ooh, Inky was characterized as the lord of freshwater sea ground located in earth. Listen to this. Considered the master shaper of the world, god of wisdom and all magic, Inky was characterized as the lord of Abzu, the freshwater sea or groundwater located within the earth. In the later Babylonian epic, the begator of, of the gods, and I, and I feel like this is the god of gods, is inert and sleepy. He finds his peace disturbed by the younger gods. So he sets out to destroy them. His grandson, Inki, chosen to represent the younger gods, puts a spell on Abzu, casting him into a deep sleep, thereby, thereby confirming him deep, confining him deep underground. Inki subsequently sets up his home in the depths of the Abzu. Inki thus takes on all of the functions of the Abzu, including his fertilizing powers as lord of the waters and lord of semen wow and then looks upon the the daughters of the other guy and make them wives i've just put that part in there but wow he put him into a deep sleep In another, even older tradition, Namu, the goddess of the primeval creative matter, and the mother goddess portrayed as having given birth to the great gods, was the mother of Inki. And as the watery creative force was said to pre-exist, E.A. Inki, Benito states, with Inki, it is an interesting change of gender symbolism. The fertilizing agent is also water. Sumerian or Ab, which also means semen. And one evocate pastures in Sumerian. Iki stands at the empty riverbeds and fills them with his water. Water is more powerful than we know, y'all. And our water has been contaminated. So I ain't talking about the everyday water. We need to go get spring water. Like untouched water. It's giving a little bit more history about the Sumerian gods. Mingling of waters was known as, in Sumerian, Namu, and was identified as the mother of Enki, Namu. Oh, the Sasika twelve tale with similarities to the biblical story of the forbidden fruit repeats the story of how fresh water brings life to barren land. Inki, the water lord, then caused to flow the water of the heart, having fertilized his consort, Nurishag, also known as Ki or Earth. After nine days, being her nine months, the months of womanhood, like good butter, Nitu, the mother of the land, like good butter, gave birth to Narshag, Lady Greenery. When Narshag left him, a water lord, he came upon Nishar, Lady Greenery. Not knowing her to be his daughter. Shut the fuck. I already knew where this was going. Not knowing her to be his daughter. 
And because she reminds him of his absent concert, Iki then seduces as an intercourse with her. Miss Shark then gave birth to Nakari, Lady Fruitfulness, or Lady Lady Pasture, and leaves Inky alone again. A second time, Inky in his loneliness finds and seduces Nurika again, girl. And from that union, Nurika gave birth to Utu, Weaver or Spider and Weaver of the Web of Life. You know what? This is the story of the gods. Uh, a third time, Inky succumbs to the temptation and attempts seduction of Utu. Upset about Inky's reputation, Utu consults Nurshag, who upset, who upset at the promiscuous, wayward nature of her spouse. Advises a two to avoid the riverbanks, the places likely to be affected by flooding, the home of Inky. In another version of this myth, Nereshag takes Inky's seemings from a two's womb and plants it in the earth, where eight plants rapidly germinate. With her two-faced servant and steward, Ishimi, Inky in the swampland, and the swampland lies stretched out. What is this plant? What is this plant? His messenger Ishir answers him, My king, this is the tree plant, he says to him. He cuts it off for him and he and he eats it. And so despite warning, Iki consumes the other seven fruit, consuming his own semen. What? He falls falls pregnant ill with swelling in his jaw his teeth his mouth his hips his throat his limbs his side his ribs the guards are at a loss to know what to do <laughs> they sit in the dust as Iki lacks a birth canal through which to give birth he seems to be dying with swelling the fox then ask and will king of the gods if i bring their shag before thee what shall be my reward and their shag sir Sacred fox and then fetches the goddess. Nurshag relents and takes Inky's ab, water or semen, into her body. Wow. And gives birth to the gods of the healing of each part of the body. Abu for the jaw, Nashi for the throat, Napu for the hip, Nashi for the tooth, Nurshag for the mouth, Dinzi for the side, and Shing for the limbs. The last one, Niti, Lady Rib, is also a pun of Lady Life. Y'all know how they say Adam came from the rib. Oh, okay. It's it's mighty similar, ain't it? Um, also a pun of Lady Life, a title of nurture herself. The story that symbolizes the, the way in which life is brought forth through the addition of water to the land. Once it grows, water is required to bring plants to fruit. It also consoles balance and responsibility, nothing to excess. Wow, Niti, the title of Nurshag, also means the mother of all living. And was a title labor given to her and goddess Kiba. This is also the title given in the Bible to Eve. <sighs> this is also the title given to the Bible to Eve, the Hebrew and Ebrick was made from the rib of Adam. I just said that. <gasps> A strange reflection of the Sumerian myth in which Adam, not Inky, walks in the garden of paradise. Y'all, instead of telling us the true origins, they just make up all of this shit and we got to figure out the origins by ourselves. I literally... When I say I feel in my spirit and I just be putting that stuff together on my own. When I saw Lady Rib, I had connected that to the rib already before I read down. <sighs> Thank you, spirit. Let me go on and wrap this up, y'all. I knew it. The teacher will appear when the student is ready. Y'all must have been ready for this. Wow. I am like shocked. This might be have to be part three. After six generation of guys and a Babylonian seventh generation. After six generation of guys. Pause. Six generations of gods. After six 
generations of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you are the sons and daughter of God. You truly are. They just didn't give you your history. But if you dig a little bit, it's there. Wow. I didn't want to tell us it's myth. Okay. Wow. After sixth generation of God in Babylonian, in the seventh generation, the younger Agigi gods, the sons and daughters of Enlil and Nilil, go on strike and refuse their duties of keeping creation working. What? Absu, god of fresh water co-creator of the cosmos threatens to destroy the world with his waters and did Noah and the gods gather in terror Inky promises to help and puts Abzu to sleep they love putting people to sleep confining him in irrigation canals Places him in curb beneath his city of Eridu. But the universe is still threatened as Tiamat, I've heard that before, angry at the imprisonment of Abzu and at the promoting of her son and at the prompting of her son and visor Kingu decides to take back creation herself. And the gods gather again in terror, turning to Inky for help. But Inky, who harnessed Abzu, Tiamat's consort for irrigation, refuses to get involved. What? The gods then seek help elsewhere. And the, patri and the patriarchal Enlil, the father, their father... God of Nippuru promises to solve the problem if they make him king of the gods. In the Babylonian tale, Enlil's role is taken by Marduk, I've heard of that, Enki's son, and in the Assyrian version, in Ashur, after dispatching Tiamat with the arrows of his whiz winds, drawn her throat. Constructing the heavens with the arc of her ribs, and Lil places her tail in the sky as the Milky Way, and her crying eyes become the source of the Tigris and the Euphrates. But there is still the problem of who will keep the cosmos working. Inky, who might have to otherwise come to their aid, is lying in a deep sleep and fails to hear their cries. His mother, Namu, created also of Abzu and Tiamat brings the tears of the gods before Inki and says O oh my son arise from the bed from thy slumber work what is wise fashion servants for the gods may they produce their bread what? Inki then advises that they create a servant of gods humankind out of clay and blood Done against Inky's wish, the gods decide to slay Kingu and Inky finally consents to use Kingu's blood to make the first human, bruh. With whom Inky always later has a close relationship. The first of the seven sages, seven wise men, Abuga, Abwater, God, Great Lu Man. 
water great man also known as Adapa. I think it's Adam. Inky assembles a team of divinities to help him, creating a host of good and princely fashioners. He tells his mother, Oh my mother, the creature whose name thou hast uttered, it exists. Bind upon it the will of the gods. Mix the heart of clay that is over the abyss. The good and princely fashions will thicken the clay. Thou do thou bring the limbs into existence. Near my Nishag, his wife and concert will work above thee. Nitu, goddess of birth, will stand by thy fashioning. O mother, decree thou it's the newborn's fate. Adapa, I think it's Adam, y'all. How we go from Adapa to Adam? The first man fashioned, bam! The first man fashioned later goes and acts as the advisor to the king of Andrew. When in the Sumerian king lists the me of kingship, descends on Eridu. Samuel Noel Kramer believes that behind the myth of Inki's confinement of Azul lies an older one of struggle between Inki and the dragon Kerr, the underworld. What? The Atris Ufus has it that Enlil requested for Namu the creation of humans, and Numu told him that with the help of Inki, her son, she could create humans in the image of God. In the Sumerian epic entitled Emeka and the Lord of Aretha, Irma and introductory spell appears recounting inky having had mankind communicate in one language in other accounts it is the him imploring inky to do so in other cases inky felicitated the debates between the two kings by allowing the world to speak one one language the presumed superior language of the tablet which is sumerian Let me guess the Babel of Tower, the Tower of Babel, where the language was split. This is wild, y'all. Even for me. At that time, there was no state, there was no scorpion, there was no hyena, there was no lion, there was no dog, no wolf, no fear, no trim, trembling. As human had no rival. It was then that the lands of Sabdar, Hamazi, the distinctly tongued Sumner, the great mountain, the answers of nobility, Akkad, the land possessing the befitting, the land of Martu, lying in safety, the totality of heaven and earth, the well-guarded people, all proclaim Enlil in a single language. Enlil, the Lord of abundance and true word, the Lord chosen in wisdom who watches over the land, the expert of all gods, the chosen wisdom, the Lord Iridu, Iridu in key places and alteration of the language in their mouths. The speech of humanity is one. Once upon a time, there was no snake, no scorpion, no hyena, no lion, no wolf, no dog, no terror, no rival. In those days, the lands of Subdor, the great land of the decrees of Princeship, ruled the land, having all the appropriate, the land, Martu, resting in security, the whole universe, the people in unison, the in will, and one, one tongue spoke. Inky, the Lord of Abundance, who commands are trustworthy, the Lord of Windows, who understands the land, the leader of gods, and Dao with Windows, the Lord of Inky, who changed the speech in their mouths, brought contention into it, into the speech of man that until has been one. They brought that down like three different times. Okay. The Sumerian version. Flood myth. Here we go again. Y'all, this is wild. I did not know mermaids was going to turn into all of this. But I'm glad it did. Let me see. 
The Sumerian version of the flood myth. The causes of the flood and the reason of the hero survivor are unknown due to the fact the beginning of the tablets described the story describing the story had been destroyed. I bet they were. Nonetheless, Kramer has stated that it can probably be reasonably inferred that the hero survived due to Inky's aid because this is what happens in later Babylon versions. And Leo, the king of the gods, sets out to eliminate humanity whose noise is disturbing his rest. Here we go again. He successfully sends drought, famine, and plague to eliminate humanity. But Enki throttles his half-brother plague by teaching um, artists how to conquer the threats. Each time, Articus asks the population to abandon worship of all, of all gods except the one responsible for the calamity. And this seems to shame them into relenting humans. However, proliferate a fourth time, enraged and lil Coven the council of deity, deities and gets them to promise not to tell humankind that he plans their total annihilation. What the hell? Inky does not tell Arthur directly but speaks to him in secret via a red reed wall. He instructs Artisan to build a boat. Ooh! He instructs Artisan. Is that not Noah? To build a boat in order to rescue his family and other living creatures from the coming delog. After the seven day delog, the flood hero frees frees a swallow, a raven, a dud, in effort to find if the flood waters have reduced. Upon landing, a sacrifice is made to the gods. And Lil is angry. His will has been thwarted yet again. And Inky is named as the culprit. Inky ex- in- Inky explains that Enlil is unfair to punish the guiltless and the gods institute measures to ensure that humanity does not become too populous in the future. This is one of the oldest of surviving Middle Eastern dialogue myths. There is an agenda that says the world's overpopulated and Oh, this goes deep. Inky explains. It's unfair to punish the guiltless and the gods institute measures to ensure that humanity does not become too populous in the future. What the fuck? And the gods. The myth. Inky and Indian God tells the story of how the youngest goddess feats with her father. The two deities participate in a drinking competition. Inky abbreviate gives Ina all of the Mies. The next morning when Inky awakes with a hangover, he asks his servants for the Mies, only to be informed that he is giving them to Inanna. Upset, he sends Gallus to recover them. Inanna sails away in a boat of heaven and arrives safely back to a quay of Urk. Eventually, Inky admits his defeat and accepts a peace treaty with Uruk. Politically, the myth would seem to indicate events of early period when political authority passed from Inki city to Urdu, Suyana city of Urk. In the myth of Indiana's descent, Iyana, in order to console her grieving sister, this is what I remember, Urgaseg, who is mourning the death of her husband, slain by Gilgamesh and Urdu, sets out to visit his sister. Iyana tells his servant, his servant, Nishvarg, Lady Evening, a reference to Isana's soul as the evening star. We've heard that before. Evening Star to get help from Anu and Il or Inki if she does not return in three days after. Yeah, because she went to the underworld. After Ina has not come back, Nurse Gog approaches Anu only to be told that he knows the goddess's strength and ability to take care of herself. When Lil tells Nurse he's busy running the cosmos, Inki immediately expresses concern and dispatches his gala. Sexless beings created from the dirt from beneath the god's fingernails to recover the young goddess. These beings may be the origin of the Greek Roman Galil, being the third sex who played an important part in early religious ritual. What? In the story, Inaga and Shugala, probably saying these names are wrong, the gardener set by Inki to care for the date palm he had created, finds Inki sleeping on the palm tree. Oh my God! And rapes the goddess in her sleep. Awakening, she discovers that she has been violated and seeks to punish the miscreant. What the fuck? Shanaluka seeks protection from Inky. What? Whom Bader believe, be, uh, believes to be his father. 
In classic English French, the father advises Chocolat to hide in a city where Naga would not be able to find him. Inky as the protector of whoever comes to seek his help. Whatever. As the empower of Ina here challenges the young and Pitu's goddess to control her anger so as to be better able to function as a great judge. Eventually, after cooling her anger, she too seeks the help of Inky as spokesperson of the Assembly of the Gods. The Igi and Anukai. After she presents her case, Inky sees that justice needs to be done and promises to help delivering knowledge of where the miscreant is hiding. You know what? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, here we go again. I'm finna wrap it back up. Right back up to the mermaid, right? Inky, later EA, was apparently depicted sometimes as a man covered with the skin of a fish. And this represent representation, as likewise the name of the Temple EA House of the Watery Depth, points typically to the original character as a god of the waters. Because I can go on and on and on and on and on. Oh my god, I knew it. I fucking knew it. I knew it was so much more. I'm going to save this and keep on. I'm going to save this for myself, but let me finish up EA. So EA, this is from GodChecker.com. I love GodChecker. So EA, supreme creator, god of water and have fish. The father of Marduk, he also created Adapa, the fish human out of wet mud the entity aquaticus he's very very wet half fish he knows absolutely everything and is more than happy to share ea gender male type god babylonian in charge of creating expertise creation this is wild can okay, we come back up Father of Marduk. Father of Marduk. The Babylonian deity, fertility god, and supreme holy leader. The boss of Babylon, Babylonian. Okay, let me go back. And created Adapa. The first human! Adapa! Adam! The first human. The prototype human duties was constructed from wet mud by EA, the creative water god. That gives you some idea how creative he was. Adapa's story reveals a valuable lesson. It's not a good idea to tear the wings off a wind god. You may think you have a reasonable cause. If while out for a day sailing, your brand new hobby. On the Euphrates River, Shatu, the offer of wind god load you all over the place and you come close to sinking but honestly it's not worth it i have to look up shantu adapa's display of river rage stopped shantu's antics and he was very cross despite having the ability to grow new wings almost instantly he brought charges and the case went to the minor lawsuits court run by i knew the god of many parts so let me look at shantu um babylonian wing guard apparently he's a temporal Adapa was so in irritated by Shantu's whizzing around his head like an enormous windfly. He pulled his wig off. Wings off. Okay, let me go back. I knew. I knew the god of many parts. I knew. Akkadian creator god. Top sky god. Lord of the heaven and supreme manager of all the other gods. Wow. I knew. I knew. His parentage depends <laughs> whether you are Samir or Babylon. It could be Apasu, Tamater, Ashgar, Kijar. He has two sons, Ea and Enlil. This is the story of God. And, and the two sons.
two sons, EA and Enlil. They are also Dicesai who did what EA wanted to see, Enlil the land, and Anu was left with the sky. Wow. Then they decided the universe would make a good prize. This was a mistake as Marduk, landlord of the sun at the time, took objection. So let me click on Marduk. This is like it's so so interesting to me. Okay, so his two sons. Basically the story of the gods. And I cannot get over Adapo went to his dad for advice. EA told him to dress sensibly and boy heavy. Teaching mortals how wise and wonderful the gods were. Explain to them how to conduct themselves a decent human being. This is a crazy. Okay. So I am going to keep that for my notes and to keep reading because they the Bible is basically the Sumerian stories retold. And mermaids are probably the daughters of one of the gods, like we read. So, yeah, this is probably going to be like a three part because I know it's really, really long. Really, 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 really long. But I'm going to tell y'all um, about those different religions and I'm going to look up those gifts. And we are going to start working on our rinky healing abilities and i'll be doing another podcast with my bestie i'll tell you guys when that one is up i was supposed to do it on the 6th but i was just so busy so i'm gonna have to redo that so yeah this will be part three namaste love a stay and always vibe hi babe thanks a million for listening i hope you have a better than great day i love you talk to you later Mwah. bye